Hello guys, in this video we'll be exploring the autosomal DNA, so the predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a Mycenaean individual who lived in late Bronze Age Greece. Um, now, about Mycenaeans, it is conventional wisdom that Mycenaeans were in the European people, and it seems that relative to the Minoans, which I've also done videos on, Mycenaeans have more kind of Yamnaya, uh, Northern European-like ancestry, so pay attention to that when we get to the GD match results. When it comes to appearance, this is what he looked like. Uh, Mina Shakot is predicting him to have hazel-colored eyes, Greek-shaped nose. It would be kind of surprising and ironic if he scored anything other than Greek-shaped nose, I think. And uh, Nashakot also predicts him to have black hair. Now, Wysak, as you can see, Wysak gave him a completely deranged prediction, made him brown-skinned. Uh, I depicted him with white skin because Snipper Free predicted him to have white skin, and I trust Snipper Free over Wysak any day when it comes to skin color and anything else, actually. And um, Snipper Free also did predict him to have ha uh, hazel or green eyes. Now, what's interesting is he was heterozygous for BH1 and BH2 and BH3, which means he had an ancestor, he had an ancestor somewhere down the line who had BH3. And I'm saying BH3 because BH3 implies that he also had BH2 and BH1. You cannot have BH3 without the other two. And uh, just as a quick reference, in case you aren't following what I'm putting forward here, he had an ancestor who had BH3, which on this phylogenetic tree you can see the mutation that's the most progressive in terms of OCA2 uh, and HERC2 mutations. He did not have the no-go learner mutation in DRD2 Pro Pro variant, so increased risk of schizophrenia relative to Europeans, but he had A2A2, which is a typical human genotype in TAC1, and I've made videos on various gorillas, chimpanzees, monkeys, they tend to have A1, A1 here. Neanderthals actually also tend to have A1, A1 here. Now, A1 genotype relative to A2 increases the likelihood of ADHD and Parkinson's. He was uh, heterozygous for comtz valmet variation, which is also known as the warrior gene, so he was intermediate level of dopamine, and uh, he did not have derived OXTR, did not have the sociopath gene. Uh, he also did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, uh, which, which is a very uniquely Northern European mutation, so it's not so surprising that he doesn't have it. He did have the European mutation that protects against myopia, so hooray for him not uh, needing glasses, and uh, he also did not have the East Asian EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits. Now, uh, finally, moving on to polygenic traits. He had a pretty average risk score for Crohn's disease. He had a pretty average risk score for type 2 diabetes. He had a pretty below average risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he had a below average, maybe slightly just average risk score for coronary heart disease. Uh, he had an average risk score for bipolar. Uh, he had a very high risk score for asthma. And um, he had a pretty below average risk score for Parkinson's disease. Now, moving on to GD match results, this is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Now, we can not instantly notice the big difference between this individual and what a typical Greek from Greece would score today. Now, a uh, Greek from Greece would score much more Baltic here. And because this individual doesn't score any Baltic, he's closest to groups like West Sicilians, Italians, Sardinians. He's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Italian, Jewish plus Sardinian, or there's also West Sicilian plus Sardinian, which is kind of what you would see with G25. And uh, with the G25, we see pretty much more of the same. This Mycenaean is getting modeled as a mixture of Sardinian plus some kind of Eastern Mediterranean. So, you know, maybe not as Southern as the Minoan individual, but still uh, very Southern, not like the modern Greeks. And here is what he scores with MDLPK11. Here he's scoring 8.5% of European hunter-gatherer admixture. Now EHG here is not European hunter-gatherer. EHG here is Caucasus stuff, so that's Caucasus, 20% Caucasus. But if we assume that Yamnaya and Indo-Europeans had one half in the European hunter-gatherer ancestry, then this individual is around 16 or 17% Indo-European. And uh, with MDLPK16, once again, if you add up the step, plus the Northeast European, you get around 17% of Yamna related admixture, uh, which is actually still much, much less than what's typical for Greeks today, hence why he's getting modeled as a mixture of Greek plus Sardinian instead of just Greek. This is what he scores with Harappa World. You can see here 13% Northeast European, so he has he has some Northeast European admixture, actually. He's got some Yamna admixture, but uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Cypriot plus Basque, so clearly less Yamna admixture still than what's typical for Greeks today. And with PunDNA LK10, 
Uh, he's got 24% European Hunter Gather, which is relative to ENF, which is a very southern component here. ENF here does not represent farmers, European farmers, I promise you that. But uh, with the Oracle, he's closest to Sicilians and Ashkenazi Jews, which is kind of funny. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Cypriot plus Basque Spanish, more of the same. So, once again, more southern than typical Greeks today who actually have some Slavic admixture too. This is what he scores with upon DNA LK12. Here you can see he's scoring 23% Caucasus HG and 14% uh, European HG. Now some of this Caucasus HG also did come from the Yamne. You have to keep that in mind. With the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of uh, some kind of European farmer plus Caucasus stuff and he's closest to Sicilians. Uh, of modern people today and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of East Sicilian plus Sardinian here with the two-way oracle which is much more southern than what you would expect for a Greek person from Greece today to score. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. He's scoring actually 17% Ancestral North Eurasian. Some of it is from the Caucasus admixture. Some of it is from the EHG admixture. With the Oracle, he's closest to Sicilians. And you might be tempted to say, well, Sicilian, not Indo-European. But Sicilians actually have a lot of Indo-European ancestry. And the difference between this individual and Minoan is this individual is getting modeled as a mixture of Sicilian plus something else. Whereas Minoan was getting modeled as a mixture of Sar Sardinian plus Levant. So Sardinian plus Levant, none of these groups have any Indo-European admixture, where Sicilians actually have quite a lot of Indo-European admixture. And finally, this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, overwhelmingly West Eurasian, a lot of modern Caucasoid, modern West Eurasian drift, right? Very modern individual. And um, thank you guys for watching my video until the end. You can actually download the sample in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube.